One of the things that's most interesting to me is the emergent CubeSat uh, architecture, um, which is a revolutionary low-cost access to space that's available to not only research institutions like Los Alamos National Laboratory, but many universities and private entities. A CubeSat is a small satellite that comes in a unit called a U, which is a 10 centimeter cube and is typically in the range of around a kilogram to a kilogram and a half per U. It's launched off of a common architecture called a Cube Satellite Bus and these are typically what are known as ride shares or piggyback payloads which are uh, very cheap to launch because most of that launch is being paid for by a large satellite or some other mission. The rocket propulsion that we've been developing is a solid-based technology, but it differs from classical solid propellants, mainly in that it's a completely non-detonable, much less hazardous propulsion technology. Um, we call it the segregated fuel oxidizer concept. It relies on chemistry that's been developed at Los Alamos and other institutions over the last number of decades that enables high hydrogen, high nitrogen storage in a solid, compact, volume efficient package. These materials, however, are very energetic. I like to think of them as just a uh, energetic hydrogen storage mechanism. And when you ignite them, then they will burn like a classic propellant and release that fuel that will go into a section that has your oxidizer grain and that hot fuel will cause that oxidizer to decompose and releases oxygen gas or oxidizing components that will burn the fuel creating the bulk of your propulsion. Propulsion is desirable on CUBE satellites because it's an enabling technology that greatly expands the mission space of these small satellites. The National Academies uh, recently identified propulsion as one of the primary categories of technology that needs to be developed to really cause these CUBE satellites to be breakthrough through in science missions and uh, move them beyond just simple university class projects. One of the low-hanging fruits of propulsion that we see for CUBE satellites or small satellites in general is a deorbit capability. We're very much getting inundated with space junk. I think NASA tracks about 500,000 pieces, individual pieces of space junk. And at some point in the future, the um, small satellites like this, if it doesn't have a compelling mission to NASA, could be banned. So if you could demonstrate a deorbit capability within a satellite, then getting approval to fly it will be uh, much easier. We had a very successful firing of, of this motor array. So I think we're very close to being able to put this propulsion system onto a satellite for a simple demonstration propulsion capability in orbit. My greatest ambitions for seeing this propulsion system actually be implemented is in actual space flight. And the stretch goal is even something like propulsion to the moon, getting a small spacecraft in either uh, landing on the moon or orbit around the moon. Mm -hmm.